Thank you, gentlemen. Well, I'm very excited about this. For some reason, people think that they can push us around here at late night. Well, believe me, we are tired of being the doormats of network television, and tonight we are striking back. We are going to slap a suit on anyone who even looks cross-eyed at us. <laughs> and to help us out, we have asked one of the real heavy hitters of the American legal profession to advise us. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Mr. F. Lee Bailey. <laughs> Lee, how are you? Nice to see you, sir. First of all, let me thank you for coming to our assistance here. Uh, tell us what a lawsuit is. For people who don't understand, I'm not sure myself, what constitutes a lawsuit? It's a statement filed in court saying, you've done me wrong, mm -hmm. you should pay. And is there a set of guidelines by which uh, you can determine if you're eligible to sue, or can anybody sue? Well, anybody can sue for anything. Whether you can get a lawyer to bring the suit is another question. I see. All right. That's why we've invited you here tonight. I'm going to now tell you some of these circumstances, and I want you, from all of your years of, of legal uh, studying and practicing of the law, advise us whether or not we can go ahead and sue. Mm -hmm. Fair enough with you? Certainly. First of all, let's start with this damn thing. What the hell? Is there anything... <laughs> is there any way... Uh, isn't that the ugliest looking... Uh, of course, I may be getting close to something I don't want to hear. <laughs> all right. You know, if you sue on that one, then truth is a defense. Oh, so then I'm in trouble. Uh, and you have to prove malice. Yeah. Uh, all right, now, now, these are things that have happened to us. We've been on the air over two years now. Um, on our second international day. We mm -hmm. do these shows where people are the Steve Martin of Peru and uh, so on and so forth, and we get them in here. Uh, people who are big stars in other countries. We featured a man named Otto Blihovdi. I have his album right here. And Otto uh, build, uh, was billed as the Kenny Rogers of Norway. <laughs> and in fact, right back here on the liner notes, it says, Ja, yeah, sure, you betcha, Otto Blihovdi's Norwegian. All right. Now, uh, Lee, I want you to take a look at some videotape from that night and then we'll discuss the problem. This is Otto Blihovdi, the Kenny Rogers of Norway. Uh, now, now how, did you, how did you get to be known as the Kenny Rogers of Norway? Oh, uh, just singing around. Uh -huh. Now, uh, uh, you, you're from Norway? <laughs> <laughs> now, I'm from Wisconsin, no. You're anyway. from Wisconsin, now, but... <laughs> but you, uh, you, you were born in Norway. No, no, you're, you're born in Wisconsin. I was born in Wisconsin. But your your family, you're of Norwegian heritage. Yeah, it is, yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, that's exhibit number one. Do we have a suit against this guy? For what? Well, he said he was the uh, the uh, Kenny Rogers of Norway. We booked him on the show. I was disappointed. Millions of American TV viewers were disappointed. Yeah, I think we should sue it once. I, I will refer this case to Marvin Mitchelson. And <laughs> but right do we, up his alley. But do we have any actual grounds for a suit here? If he hadn't told you the truth on the air, you probably could have nailed him for millions. Oh, really? Yeah. But, but since he you, came clean there? Through sharp interrogation, you smoked it out. And that <laughs> <for sure. laughs> sharp interrogation. All right. So Otto Blihovdi is probably, we can't go after him. I'd drop that one. Okay, we're going to drop this one. All right. He'll be able to sleep a little easier tonight, won't he? <laughs> All right, now. <laughs> I don't mean to suggest there aren't lawyers who wouldn't sue him. No, but in, no, we want your opinion. Everybody. I understand. Yeah. I understand. Now, uh, on another night, we had, uh, one week we had the, what we thought was the world's largest vase. This man who was the uh, wrestling coach uh, in Iowa, uh, had the, claimed he had the world's largest vase. Now, we heard from a Canadian who said that his vase was the world's largest vase. So uh, we brought in a voice stress analyst to the studio and with uh, Harold Nichols, the man who claimed to own the world's largest vase, sitting right here, we called the Canadian. So again, look at the videotape and uh, Lee, if you will, tell us if you think Find we have a case. He's got the, uh, um, the better vase. All right, sir, first of all, I understand you own the world's largest vase. Well, we hope it's the world's largest vase. All right, and, and uh, how high, how tall is this vase? It is uh, seven foot five inches tall. Seven foot five. All right. How tall is yours? I think it's six, eight and a half. Six, eight and a half. Well. All right. Uh, 
Okay, now clearly his vase was not the world's largest vase. And also, is there anything we can sue over that haircut? Well, who, who did? <laughs> the haircut for sure. Who was on the polygraph? The Canadian? No, no, yeah, he, his voice was, yeah, that's right, the that, Canadian voice. That wasn't voice. a voice that was a polygraph, and whoever it was was lying. Okay. Oh, really? Well, he didn't believe he was telling the truth. The problem is you used the word largest. Yeah. He said his was taller. The only way you can find out whose is larger is to fill them both with water and pour it into a container. So again, we're dealing with So I think with, he snuck with, away with clever lawyering. Yeah. However, I will refer this suit to William Kunstler. He'll handle that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it, give me one, one final opinion here. Uh, let it go, or can we move on this? I think uh, operating on a contingent fee, which is a third of the outcome. Uh, most lawyers... Third? A third. We take a third, Ooh. sometimes a half. Yeah. And in this case, that would be the coffee without the sugar. Yeah. I don't think economic feasibility is with us. Okay. This All right. Harold Nichols gets we'll off the hook. All right. Don't worry. We got some big ones coming up. Uh, uh, Lee, we have to do a commercial, but we got plenty more stuff here to sue. Uh, Maybe we'll... something in the commercial we can sue. <laughs> Perhaps. You never. And we'll go through the audience and find somebody that rubs us the wrong way and. Uh, well, there are people out there that are guilty of all kinds of things. We're just so, showing up here tonight. Exactly. I think you could get them on something. Uh, we we have to go away. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the uh, program. Tonight is lawsuit night, and uh, F. Lee Bailey is here. Speaking of lawsuits, what was your most memorable, the one that gave you the most satisfaction that, that you won? Obviously, Probably. Obviously, would be one that you won. Well, you do like to win. Um, the trial of Captain Ernest Medina, which was tough. It really had the honor of the country and the armed forces at stake. But I liked it best because the system worked the way it was supposed to. There was no nonsense. Uh, is, is, it, is it fair for me to ask you what the biggest cash settlement you were involved in either way? Well, we're hoping to see it settle. We had a verdict uh, here in New York of 7100000 for an air crash case, oh, my. doctor. Oh, my. And although it'll get trimmed down, I think it'll be substantial. Yeah, well, it, when somebody hears that that kind of money has been awarded one way or the other, do people always pay up, or is it just you get what you can? The airline in question has resisted paying up until they exhaust their appellate rights. Yeah. Yes. All right. Okay, let's get back to the important stuff. Yeah. Um... All right, so far, we don't have a suit against uh, the Kenny Rogers of Norway. Um, got out with the skin of his teeth there. And we don't have a suit against Dr. Harold Nichols, who claims to own the world's largest base. And as you pointed out, it looked like the guy on the phone may not have uh, believed he, was, he, he wasn't was. doing too well. All right, that was with the, uh, the, the polygraph. Now, uh, this is very recently. This was last week. Uh, let me show you a tape. This was uh, the end of last Tuesday's show. I'm announcing the guests upcoming for the following day, which would have been uh, Wednesday. So, so take a look at this, uh, Mr. Bailey, and again, we'll come back to you. Now, you. tomorrow, Mayor Koch will be here, Larry Holmes will be here, Kitchen of Tomorrow, fastest grocery bagger. I think I see the problem. Did you see what happened there? Now, uh, we I, mentioned I, I, Larry Holmes. I think Holmes, maybe Larry right? didn't show. Larry Holmes did not show up the That's next right. day. We called. Uh, about 10 o'clock that morning to find out what Larry wanted to talk about. And we heard from the person <coughs> on the other end of the phone, well, haven't you heard Larry's not planning to be on your show? Mm -hmm. Nobody told us nothing. So, okay, scheduled to be on the show, doesn't show. There unquestionably is a breach of contract case there. I would wait until William French Smith leaves office and get him to handle it. However, <laughs> I do point out that sometimes... Now, you're not taking this seriously. I'm taking it very seriously. <laughs> you can sue Larry for damages. Okay. I would caution you that probably he will never be on the show again, and sometimes even with a good case, one is slow to sue an 800-pound gorilla. He might not like that yeah. if you sued him. Yeah. Um, he then he would have a suit for assault and battery. <laughs> he had been on the show a couple of other times. Very nice man. We mm -hmm. were really looking oh, forward to him. Nice He's the people's champion, you know. Mm -hmm. He let down kids of all ages all over this country. Oh, no question about it. It's a terrible lawsuit. Yeah. And, and shut-ins, a lot of shut-ins were interested. You know... The, sh the shut-ins can't go out to see him fight, so they were really looking forward to this. Well, what you, what you should do is find out where he's fighting next and attach the gate, get legal process. Oh, boy, I so like that. Attach the gate. Yeah. Just be very sure. Be very sure that Larry Holmes never finds out I suggested that. <laughs> 
Well, Everyone well, here is sworn to secrecy. I don't think I there's it. any no. chance of that. All right, we're going to attach the gate. That's a good starting point. Now, uh, can you, you got is, one good case already? Is uh, is there a way we can assign a dollar figure to this, or just say we're going to atta attach the gate? I think you probably are going to have to have an audience poll to find out what that was worth, and that'd be the basis of your claim. Well, I don't know if we want to go through. You that. don't want to go through all that. Well, this audience right here obviously thinks it's a very heavy case. I may wind up taking this myself. We like to start. We like to start. We like to start all of ours at 1.7 million. Would that be a fair place One to start? Point, well, if you, if Let's you like do small that. lawsuits, I don't do nuisance cases myself. Oh. <laughs> all right. Well, you pick a figure. We're going to attach the gate. Plus, Larry wouldn't understand anything less than five million. I don't. Got to get his attention. He might Good just point. send you a check. <laughs> I, mean, I take it you want a big splashy suit. You don't oh, get yeah. Paid. We want this to drag on for weeks and months. I'd be afraid his lawyer would just cut a check and say we don't need the aggravation. Well, let's hope so. You know, NBC has an entire floor full of nothing but dozing lawyers. We yeah. want to give, give these guys something to I, do. I have bumped into a few of them in yeah, the past. Yeah. It's like taking candy from a baby. It's terrible. <laughs> Whoa. All right. Okay, so we have one case, Larry Holmes, for at least five, point, uh, five million. That's mm -hmm. the bottom line on Larry Holmes. Okay. Now... Now, this one is the one that really got us going uh, last uh, February. Uh, this was our second anniversary program, and normally this should have been a very happy, very <coughs> joyous occasion for all of us on the program. We had enlisted the help and booked to the show the Merchant Marine Academy Choir. Uh -huh. and, and throughout the celebration uh, at a hotel off Central Park, they were going to be singing songs, and they were going to close the show, our second anniversary 90-minute special, with uh, they were going to sing Hang On Sloopy. Okay, they, they took a powder, Lee, and they never Another showed up. Another no-show? Well, they showed up and left. And let me, let me show you, we have some videotape on this. Uh, look at it closely, and then we'll, we'll chat a little bit more about the... Uh, Larry, of being what happened to, to the Merchant Marine Academy? What happened to what? <laughs> what happened to the choir? I don't know. What happened to the choir? <laughs> They're not singing now. See, see, this is, Larry, it's not a riddle. What happened? Did, wasn't there earlier a large group of men and women singing? Yeah, there was. <laughs> what the hell happened to them? I don't know. Did they leave? Yes. Uh, do you have any idea, do you have any idea why they left? No, I have no idea. <laughs> okay, but the point is, they were there. They had been performing throughout the night. We were getting ready to go to them. The last seven minutes of the show was them singing this song, and they hiked out of there. They ate our food. They danced with the Peacock Girls. They had, they, I'm sure they were drinking, and yet they, they just took a powder. And also, Lee, they said that they were reporting us to the President of the United States. Really? Yeah. Hmm. Well, he's not a lawyer, so I'm... I don't have to worry, and he doesn't even know who his lawyer is this week. <laughs> um, in analyzing this particular case, and obviously it's a breach of contract, yeah. the damages are terrible, I think you'd best make sure before bringing the suit that the fault was not in your own security people. See, watching that fellow, I think he may have lost all hundred people, just <laughs> gone to the wrong place. No, no, they were there, they were ready You're to sure go. You're sure of that? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right, well, that, that just isn't the kind of fellow I'd want guarding the Pentagon. No, right? no, that's, no, I'd... <laughs> I'll give you that. I mean, but but that's not what we're here to. Uh, we'll ship decide, this one out to. We'll ship this to Mel Bell. Mel does well in choir cases. <laughs> but do you think we have a suit in this? Oh one? yeah, absolutely. I mean, you, you can't walk off the Letterman show without expecting some serious consequences. Oh, that's right, Merchant right. Marine Academy Choir. All right, now give me a dollar figure, Lee. What do we go after here? Well, I would think the value of the choir. I mean, the actual performance is probably two, three hundred dollars. But the punitive damages from yeah, misconduct would be in the right. millions. Oh, in the good. Million. Another $5 million suit? No, no, $3 million. $3, $3 million. All right. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Ooh, we're looking at property in Bel Air tonight, folks. Um, okay, Lee, I want to thank you very much for uh, well, taking not, the not trouble too, to be here. Not too fast. I didn't come here exactly to be in your show. You know, right up the street are a couple of buildings. One says CBS and the other says ABC. Yeah. And they feel that you've been stealing their late-night audience, so I brought with me a written summons, and you'll be in the Supreme Court tomorrow. <laughs> well, it's obviously just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Lee, thank you very much for your help. Okay, next week...
Larry Holmes and the Merchant Marine Academy acquire to these folks. Very funny. Nice job. Thank you very much. <coughs>